All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So Molly Plufkins posted, seen today in Lower Manhattan. Gregor Truck says, your critics want you to be as unhappy, unfulfilled, and unimportant as they are. Let your happiness eat them up from inside. And that is a quote from Ricky Gervais. Tesla posted, Cybertruck earns five-star overall safety ratings from NHTSA. Elon said, Cybertruck is apocalypse level safe. Yeah, so Cybertruck has the lowest probability of injury and the lowest probability of rollover of any pickup truck on the market. Wes Morrill, one of Tesla's lead engineers, says, all the armchair experts claim the Cybertruck has no crumple zone, and I get it. The proportions seem impossible. It was a tough one, and there is a lot of engineering that went into it. Let me break it down for you. Here you can see the large single-piece casting in action in a high-energy crash. The plot is showing the impulse y-axis over time x-axis, and we see a nice linear progression with no large spikes. The bumper beam is crushed in the first few milliseconds, and the vehicle senses and determines what type of crash is happening and how to best deploy the restraints, airbags, and seatbelt pretensioners. As the crush continues, continues bending the steel of the drive unit cradle to move the drive unit down and out of the way. This enables the casting to progressively crush cell by cell with a nearly linear crush energy, slowing down the vehicle smoothly and over a long period of time, which reduces the acceleration transfer to the occupants. During this time and in concert with the structural absorption, the restraints are deployed, which further reduce the acceleration of the occupants, reducing probability of injury. Amazingly, you can see the accuracy of the virtual analysis compared side by side to an actual physical test. Getting these models Modeling details accurate expedites design iteration for all the various different crash cases to converge on the optimal geometry. And Wes went on to say, the castings are actually repairable after a collision. The crush rail section can be cut off and a new cast crush rail section installed in its place. Of course, at some point, it'll be damaged beyond repair as with any vehicle. And if we go to NHTSA's NCAP report and dive into the weeds a bit, check out the 35 mile an hour full frontal rigid barrier impact test results. So what we're looking at here is there's a threshold and there's a result. Right. So look how much lower than the threshold for injury the results were for both the driver and the passenger. So what is ATD? That stands for anthropomorphic test devices, basically crash test dummies. Mm. Okay, but what do these numbers mean? The first one, HIC-15, stands for Head Injury Criteria, and it assesses the likelihood of head injury based on the acceleration of the test dummy's head during the crash. So the results for many vehicles range between 200 and 500. So these are really good numbers. Very low risk of head injury for both the driver and the passenger. The chest compression number here shows how much the chest was compressed. In this case, 23 millimeters for the driver, 20 millimeters for the passenger, well below the threshold for injury. NIJ is neck injury injury criteria, and again, well below the threshold for a neck injury. The rest, neck tension, neck compression, leg femur forces are all measured in newtons and are well below the threshold force that would injure your neck or thighs. So have any pickup trucks scored poorly? Well, the 2023 Ram 1500 and the Toyota Tundra both got just four stars in the frontal crash test. The Ram scoring an HIC 15 value of about 500 to 600, and the Tundra got values of about 550 to 650. Remember the threshold 700. So a lot closer to that threshold means you're more likely to get injured, especially with your head, if you're in a Ram or a Tundra. Yeah, and here's what I don't like about NHTSA. They do the star system. Okay, fine, I understand it's easy to read. But then they put out a 45 page report with all these charts and stuff that don't make any sense unless you do your research or sure. ask rock. Um, and therefore you go like, oh, four stars. That's pretty good. <laughs> but like a way better chance that you're going to get hurt in those pickup trucks in some of these crashes. Because, I mean, if we look at those numbers, they are pretty astonishingly low. Oh, they're so far from the threshold. Yeah, uh, it's just very low chance that you're going to get hurt. And way lower than their competition. Exactly. And yet you go, well, but they're all kind of four and five stars. Uh, it really makes a difference getting into the weeds on this stuff. Right. I mean, five star crash safety ratings go from like pretty good to Tesla level, which is wow. I saw a lot of engineers that were saying if you actually assign the right number of stars that the Cybertruck would get seven. So just think about that. Right. This is the biggest problem that I have with NHTSA. I mean, I'm glad that they put out the report so that like super intelligent brainiacs who have all the time in the world can peruse through all the data. But at the end of the day, people are going to be like, how many stars does it have? I have a busy life and I need a car. And so, oh, it's got four. That sounds pretty good. And it's like it's nowhere close. It's not a linear scale, which doesn't line up with how people think. And that's the thing that I don't like about NHTSA is that, yes, this should have a seven star crash safety rating. And if we go. Oh, yeah. rocket launchers. I mean, it, I mean, as we just talked about, Cybertruck is already pretty invincible. 
Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching Now You Know Clips. You can watch full episodes of Tesla Time News on Tuesdays and in-depths on Fridays. Just click the link down below and head over to the Now You Know channel.